All right, let's let's uh, if you got time, you, you want to stick around for a minute, or are you good? Yeah, All right. no, I'm good, man. Let's uh, let's roll through this last little part here. We got kind of this end of the first round. We've kind of talked these quarterbacks, and we've alluded to some of these guys at the end of the first round here. But let's uh, let's go to these. I'm not going to say fringe guys because I think everybody likes or most people like these guys. It's just kind of what order and where you feel comfortable taking with them. Um, and the first guy for me that comes up when we start talking about after that top six, seven, maybe eight guys is Christian Watson. Um, what do you what do you think about Christian Watson? Where is he going for you? Is he not getting past you? Are you letting him go? Is it is he up in the one seven or is he at the one ten? D Row loves some Christian Watson, you? right? You love you <laughs> yeah, love dude. Christian Watson. I love Christian Watson. Christian Watson is firmly in my top seven. Top seven. Um, yeah. Now that's um, not. That's the okay. So that's super flex or, or one QB, right? So you're, you're not taking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm taking him over Kenny Pickett. No yep. way you would take Pickett over nope. Watson. Nope. Even if he nope. needed a QB. I would trade back. Um, <laughs> I would try. I would try to trade try back to if trade I really back. needed the QB. But if I'm stuck taking, making the pick, I'm, I'm taking Watson. Yep. So you're. And so I mean, do y'all want the spiel of why I love Watson? Oh, sure. Y'all want to push back on this? Because. Because it's not like there's a ton to, to watch. Uh, there's not a ton mm-hmm. of production, you know? It's it's like, it's almost like a, a, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, tell us why you love him so much. Well, I'll, I'll push back on the production. Um, are, are the counting stats there when he was at a, in a run-first offense during his entirety in college? No, but if you look at efficiency metrics sure his he was college dominator is he yeah. was fantastic and it's it's not just dominator and it's not just breakout age target uh, share. i lumped um he got a 24 percent target share or higher in each of his final is i know it's final two seasons maybe final three if you look at if you lump together all fbs receivers and all fcs receivers mm-hmm. you put them all in the same bucket and you look at the guys that just got 50 or more targets for the last three seasons question watson was in the top 30 uh, over the last two years, top 25, I want to say over the last, no, top 30 over the last three years, top 25 over the last two years, and last year, he led the nation in yards per route run. Mm-hmm. So even if you want to dwindle it down to, okay, a small school competition, things like that, plus you're looking at a guy that, does he have issues with his hands? Like, is there some drops there? Big yes, drop, but we've 13%. Already, we, Pretty we've bad already, drop rate. We've already debunked that like do drops matter in fantasy football. I don't get too carried away with it. Uh, no, but, but I don't either. If Aaron Rodgers is your quarterback, they fucking might. Right. You got to do something really crazy to get okay, into that well, inner circle. Okay, well, but the pushback the pushback did he keep throwing to MVS and he dropped really. the ball more than anybody, Mr. Frying Pan Hands himself? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's about as unreliable as did he Did he throw to really. MVS? Not really. Like yeah. well, could not start big... that guy ever. And when you did, when he blew up, he was not in your lineup. So, right. I mean, not only from the numbers standpoint, we all know the athletic testing and stuff. Sure. The other part about this is that, and I, and I want to do too much of a hand in the dirt take here, but being at Senior Bowl and seeing him up close and mm-hmm. watching him the entirety of the week, and because we can all talk about, okay, FCS competition and things like that. Okay, he put up the numbers there. Mm-hmm. What's he going to do against top competition and the transition to the NFL? I, and I'm not being hyperbolic by saying this, guys. Like, I legit watched Christian Watson, Watson dust cornerbacks and one-on-ones the entire damn yeah. week. Right. And he that- got open at will. So, for all the talk about him being raw and— I mean, you could—I the- know a bunch of raw dudes who, if you stuck them out there one-on-one, they're getting open. They could still be raw and get open I mean, one-on-ones. not necessarily Y'all, because you got somebody like— no, I mean, not necessarily, man. I, I, a great I athlete in one-on-ones, if he has any sort of body control, he can get open whenever he wants, especially if you're 6'4 and run a 4'3. Not necessarily, man. Like, and dude, which, you saw how many, okay, how, many, I, I, how many of the top corners were there? None? None of them. There they wasn't a single went, first round cornerback at the senior bowl, you know, just to, just for reference. But we're talking about guys, do they have to be like top go in the first round to be a no, step above of, competition? Of course not. Of course not. Okay. Well, you had corners that were not FCS corners and going to end up selling cars for a living that mm-hmm. were at Senior Bowl. So, well, I mean, probably half of to me, guys are going to be selling cars, but not only does he have the upside swing, it, there's a lot that comes to Christian Watson. And he's also a guy that, if you look at him over the last three seasons, 
He's been top 20 in yak per reception yeah. ev- all over the last three seasons. So there's a lot to his game, and I'm willing to take the upside swing on him. You know, we talked about upside and yeah. stuff, and in this draft class, like, yeah, Traylon Burks landed in the best possible situation for him, sure. period. That still doesn't mean that he can't fall flat. I mean, sure. he, he could. He could easily do that. Yeah. And I look at his game, him and him and Burks are ranked right next to each other. I mean, they're 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 home run upside picks. That's what they are. Right. I gotta side with Burks. I gotta give him a, a fur a firm, you know, right. pat you, on the butt, I you guess. Could, but you could call Burks still raw and unfinished as far as a prospect in, in a route running perspective, but that guy's dump trucking dudes in the SEC consistently where you're game planning against uh, you know, a, a Traylon Burks where, you know, I'm not worried about the South Dakota Jackrabbits on a run first team where a guy who runs four three and is six four can run down the field, catch it and run past everybody and be first in yards, uh, you know, per catch. Well, the other part about that is Burks, it for all the talk about him and missed tackles force and stuff like that, he still wasn't as good as people laid out there. Like he wasn't he wasn't leading the country in missed tackles. Like, yeah, but I mean, I don't really need him to be, wasn't. but I mean, he, from what I'm seeing on the field for like, I guess my biggest thing with Christian Watson is I like, there wasn't any, like, I, there's not a whole lot of all 22s. I don't see a whole lot of Christian Watson. It just seems like more of a projection than, than, than maybe like a lot of these other first round, second round guys who I feel, you know, a lot more comfortable with. Like when Christian Watson was in the second round, fuck yeah, I'm taking that upside swing, but now you're going to push him up to one eight. I, I start to get a little worried. And who was who was the last wide rookie wide receiver who came in with Aaron Rodgers that didn't take a minute to get in that circle? I mean, even Devontae Adams, who was a guy who led the broke the record for catches in a season and had Derek Carr throw it, took him a few seasons to get rolling. He was considered a bust by some people. Um, yeah, and, and the, so the, the other side of the context with of that. Rogers with a guy who, you know, maybe drops a couple of, I'm not, I, I'm painting a picture and, and a narrative. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we talked about this t- to start with, yeah. but you know, there, there is certainly some, you know, reasons to believe that it could take a minute. I'm not saying that he's gonna, but he could be, you know, he could be fucking awesome. Like I'm, I want, it's not that I dislike Christian Watson. It's less like I said, and you alluded to, like, it's the mm-hmm. ADP that I don't love currently well and to talk about the the green bay rookie wide receivers i mean every one of those guys that if we go back and we look at who they were competing against it was an absolutely different situation than when christian watson's walking into like you saw yeah. Devonte adams walked into a room they had oh shit like i want to say that was um they had jordy nelson um, um they definitely had jordy and i mean probably, probably and greg randall cobb well. walked into a room where they had greg jennings javon walker jordy i think was around there around the same time so Took him a minute too. you had established and it wasn't just established guys it was like pro bowl or all pro guys sure. that were above each one of these rookies and that's simply not what christian watson's walking into like he's going to compete with targets with the lizard king uh Al Lazard Sammy. and freaking dusty ass Randall Cobb. Sammy you know, Watkins. like yeah, Bob like Tanyan, Bobby T. Yeah, like that's who he's competing with targets against. Yeah. So it's it's a different situation, but it's also I, a different he's a, dude throwing like I would I'd feel pretty comfortable like with a lot like I just feel like if if I don't know. It I I'm with you. Like I I wanna take the swing because it's it's it seems like a lot of fun, right? Christian Watson in a bubble seems like a lot of fun and then you throw them in the Packers and I like that that system obviously you like the quarterback but he could not be there next year you know I don't know how long that situation is going to be there in Green Bay I don't know if he'll play another year maybe he does maybe he doesn't maybe it takes Christian Watson a minute coming from that school and coming into this level of competition, right? Maybe he drops a couple passes in a key situation and Rodgers puts him in the fucking doghouse, right? I can definitely see, like, I'm fine taking the swing, but I'm also with the caveat that this could not work out. But then there's also the caveat that if he does do anything great, everyone's going to lose yeah. their fucking mind and you'd be able to he, flip him for whatever you want at could have the at same, that point. So, he could have the same mm-hmm. season as Dotson or be a little worse than Dotson and people will still love Christian Watson way more than Josh Dotson. Or Jahan, no, Jahan Dotson. Well, I mean, because just there's a love zoom affair out. with him is kind of what I'm saying. Like, you know, that's part of fantasy too. Like the public loves a guy and it seems like Christian Watson is definitely a guy that they love you know and, and you know it's going to take him a while for his luster to wear off I think 
on, on on the quarterback thing, like as far as with Rodgers, I honestly think like you could make a, a case for every single one of these first round wide receivers could have quarterback issues yes. even next year. Yeah. Drake London, yep. what's up with Mariota? Garrett Wilson, is Zach Wilson any You're good? Right. Christian Watson, y'all talked about Rodgers. Traylon Burks, if Tannehill's gone. The only one that doesn't have this kind of, I mean, Chris Olave. What do they do with uh, Michael Thomas, Jameis Winston, Jahan Dotson? What happens to Wentz? The only wide receiver that you can't really make that kind of comparison with is Sky Moore. That's mm-hmm. it. Past that, all of these other guys yeah. could look at different quarterbacks in 2023. Yeah, we, we talked about that on our kind of like, nobody likes this draft class and it's just like all, all these guys kind of landed in weird spots but it, you know i think they're all pretty good but it might take a year for them to really you know like you said it could be really fast landscape change for those guys whereas you know all of a sudden uh which the CJ landscape- stroud is throwing to drake london and now people yep. are elated about that you right know? same thing in yep. washington right Wentz could be gone that could be a good that that's probably going to be a good thing yeah right? you could have bryce Young talking to t- tossing to jameson williams next year Right. You know, you right. could have like any one of these guys like, right. you know, so I, I'm I'm a little bit and I'll say this, like I'm higher uh, on this draft class and the wide receivers than I think pro- maybe consensus is. Yeah, because I, I think a I lot agree. of people I think a lot of people are low on this class and yeah. I feel like they've been hating it for, sh- for 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 a while. But then the combine hit and they were like, wait a second, these guys might actually be good. And then yeah, the draft I mean, hit and it's like landing spots suck. So now they're back to being bad. Uh, and we talk about, well, and exactly. And we talk about range of outcomes. If everybody's out on a class and they're like, oh, I'm selling my 2022 picks and I'm trading into 2023, when it's like, you don't even know who the frick is coming out right. in that class. Olave but you're ETN like, oh, went, I'm all in, yeah. baby. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Olave like, and ETN went back. Like, they, those were two huge. Yeah. Like, like, so for me, I'm like, it's a buying opportunity. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you're going to be Agreed. out on this class and you're not that big on it and stuff like that, then, yeah, I mean, looking at these guys and their profiles and their skill sets, there are a shit ton of good wide receivers that I love in this class. Right. I, I agree. really do. I agree. We're, 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 we're definitely in cahoots with you there. I, I feel like there's a, you know, a nice, a nice first round of receivers that, you know, I want to, I want to, and even bleeding into the second, uh, For sure. you know, I, I'm definitely trying to get my hands on, on some of them. We, we Watson or Sky Moore? Oh, Sky, I got Watson ahead of him right now, but. Damn it, I love Sky Moore, and I I wouldn't have a problem taking him. Um, some of that. So, but I'll put it this way, and I don't want to sound like I'm talking out both sides of the mouth. Like with all the leagues that we have, and you, you want to diversify, diversify with picks. Sure. Like to me, they're in the same kind of tier. Right. I yeah. I I was super bit. high on Sky. Sky Moore was a top four or five wide receiver in this class for me before he went to Kansas City. So I I get everybody's gonna shit their pants over the Kansas City landing mm-hmm. spot. I loved Sky Moore before all of this like love 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 yeah, him yeah. like there are so many things about his profile his game yeah. how he wins that are so, they're awesome right. like he is the, the okay and i'm gonna steal this stat i heard uh jj zacharyson and a few other people quote this but i want to throw this out here because i don't know if everybody's heard it He's the first wide receiver from a non-power five that's been drafted inside the top two rounds since Devontae Adams. That says something, man. Like, Straight not only facts, looking... Maybe that's the deal. Was, was Eskridge not a second-round pick last year? He was, but... Aren't they I from mean, the same school? That, I'm considering. But, yeah, that, I, I'm just throwing it out there. Like, that's yeah. what I heard. Yeah. So, I'm, I, I like, like Sky I like Moore it. because he pops in a lot of different metrics, though. Yeah. Um, oh, for he, sure. he, he pops in yards per route run. He led the nation and missed tackles force last year. Um, and to be honest, too, he hasn't hit the ceiling right. about what he can be. He just like, started playing wide receiver. So, yeah, he, he was recruited there as a as a quarterback, quarterback and a cornerback. Right. And it, it's insane that he's done the things that he did. And he he started out. He was a true freshman. Um, doing all these different things. So I, I love Sky Moore. Absolutely love him. Yeah, agreed. Um, we, well, I think you're maybe slightly more hesitant than most on Sky, but, I mean, you got the God the God landing spot, so, I, you know, everybody's going to be in, and good luck uh, getting your, your Sky fill. Let's go George Pickens here. We'll get this rolling and, and get you out of here.